First of all, welcome to the program. But also, if you look at you know the, these escalating in trade war concern, just two days ago we were talking about them actually finding a solution and the U.S. looking at you know with China. So, what does it, it mean for European stocks overall? Um, I think right now this clearly is the major downside risk to, to growth. The big story in Europe so far this year was the sharp deceleration in growth momentum. If you look at the domestic drivers of that, which was currency strength, um, the lagged impact of currency strength in the inventory cycle, all the domestic sources of growth momentum are actually improving. We're seeing easing lending standards. The drag from a strong euro is now starting to diminish. The inventory cycle is becoming more positive. So we've upgraded a number of the cyclical plays that have sharply underperformed this year. That's the banks, value versus growth stocks. We've upgraded orders from underweight to benchmark because all of these have effectively priced in the negative news. Now, the trade story is the major threat to the upgrades of these more cyclical plays. Tell me about the dividend in Europe. It is really competitive for American investors. Are we going to see a flow of U.S. funds over to Europe to capture that dividend? In, on our models, there are really just two things that uh, determine the performance of European versus U.S. Uh, equities. On the one hand, it's the, the relative growth uh, momentum. On the other hand, it's the currency. And given that we expect a stabilization of the growth momentum in Europe, but not a strong rebound, that will not be enough for Europe to outperform. So we had a non-consensus underweight in Europe relative to the US last year mm -hmm. that has worked well. Europe has underperformed by 15%. Yeah. Our model suggests this has further to go. And typically, fund flows of the kinds that you're referring to on our models are not a strong determinant of performance to offset that. Interesting. Let me show you an example, folks. JP Morgan right now with a dividend of 1.94%. Uh, and Sebastian, I don't want to get Daniel Morris in trouble, but BMP Paribas killing it with a 5.58% uh, uh, yield. Daniel, you could take the rest of the month off, uh, I, I guess. Sebastian, I mean, the yield differential here is extraordinary. You, I mean, I know the dividend growth is not there, but let's run through this once more. How can I turn down 5.6% at Fortress Morris? I think you want no, to take No, let's so Sebastian, um, you answer, not Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think the safest uh, method for investing is to see what are the reliable drivers and have been the reliable drivers of performance in the past. And if you've got a relationship that has held for 10, 20 years and you say that determines whether my stock is going up or down, then I would not want to ignore that. And for the relative trade of Europe versus the US, it's very clear. It's the relative direction of growth momentum and it's the currency and it's simply not giving us a green light.